This is a brief description of the three types of builder's plates fitted to steam locomotives built by Clyde Engineering for the New South Wales Government Railways. The first type is described as a small shield, seven and a quarter inches wide across the middle. The second is a large shield, nine and three quarter inches wide, with the third being a large oval, 13 and three quarter inches wide. The small shields were attached to either side of the smoke boxes of the members of the standard goods classes and 32 class built by Clyde, and either side of the cabs of 65 members of the 36 class, 3611 to 3675. This plate number 190 is from Locomotive 5433 built in 1916. These plates are quite rare, with very few surviving. The New South Wales Railway Workshops had a policy of melting down any brass items off locomotives that were no longer needed, the metal being recycled into parts such as cabside numbers, whistle bells and so on. It was not until the early 1960s, when collecting builders plates became more popular, that the railways began to salvage plates for sale, and by then most of the small shields had been destroyed. Many of the standard goods and 32 class locomotives had undergone major work on their smoke boxes, and during the 1950s the cabs of the 36s were extensively altered, losing the builders plates in the process. The large shields were fixed to either side of the tenders of the Clyde Standard Goods and 32 class locos. So each of these locos had four plates, two small shields on the engine and two large ones on the tenders. Many of these tenders survived through to the 1960s, so large shield Clyde plates are not uncommon, although single digit specimens are fairly rare. This number 8 plate is off locomotive 5103, built in 1908. The number 91 is from 5316, dated 1913. Clyde also placed large shields on the five streamlined 38s they built, 3801 to 3805. In this instance though, the large shield went on either side of the cabs, as well as both sides of the tenders. Thus, for each 38-class locomotive that Clyde built, four large shields were cast. The large oval plates were fixed to both sides of the cabs of the 25 members of the 57 class. Number 436 is from the driver's side of 5712. However, Mort's dock built the tenders and placed their plates on each side. So each 57-class loco only had two Clyde plates. It's probably safe to assume that nearly all 50 57 class plates have survived, but they are highly sought after, rarely sold, and when they are offered for sale, they are very expensive. The large oval plates were also fixed to each side of the 36 class tenders. The first order of 36 placed with Clyde was for 3611 to 25. Clyde sublet the construction of the tenders to Walsh Island dockyards, but still placed their oval plates on the tenders, even though Clyde had not actually constructed them. This plate, number 399, is from the tender of 3615. For the batch of locos consisting of 3626 to 3660, the contract for the tenders was placed by the railways directly with Walsh Island dockyards. These tenders carry Walsh Island plates. By the way, it was common for the small star on the top of the Walsh Island plates to break off. So if you are considering buying one of these plates, it's worth checking to see if the star is still in place. For the final batch of locomotives, 3661-75, to 75, Clyde built the engine and tenders and attached large oval plates to those tenders. Clyde Builders plates are considered to be one of the most ornamental plates ever created, not just in Australia, but in the world. The plates are highly sought by collectors, especially from overseas, and make a wonderful display item.